All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Keto Mojo blood glucose monitor. This thing is really nice. It's going to monitor your blood sugar, your glucose, and it's also going to monitor your ketones. And then finally, uh, when you download the app that goes with this, it's going to give you your GKI, which is your glucose ketone index. Going to let you know uh, what level of ketosis that you are in, if you're even in ketosis. So uh, what you get in the, the box is your monitor. You also get a finger prick. You get some of your prick needles. You also get a box of your test strips. Now, uh, when you order these from Amazon, you're gonna get 20 test strips of the glucose and 20 of the ketones. You can also order separate and get a box of 60. However you wanna do that, completely up to you, your choice. But when you order the monitor, uh, you're gonna get your test strips and you're also gonna get your finger prick needles. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to do a quick test. Now, inside the box, there is uh, a lot of, uh, of information and it can really seem pretty overwhelming. Now, you probably are gonna to wanna to take a look at the instruction manual, uh, but if you just follow this video here, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to check it. Now, that is a really big instruction manual, but again, it's very detail-oriented and uh, you're gonna get a lot of information out of that. This is gonna uh, advise you to download your app so that you can have all of those things connected Bluetooth and go back and check all of the uh, the readings that you've had over the past. Then your warranty information. And then you've also got these two little liquids here. So uh, you might come to a point where you think that your test strips are not testing accurately. Uh, these are gonna help get an accurate test. One's gonna be for your ketones, one's gonna be for your glucose. And you just put it on the test strip and put it into the machine and it's gonna show you whether or not it's working correctly or not. So your test strips are gonna come in foil packaging and uh, you're gonna wanna take out a blue one and a brown one and then we're just going to separate it just like that. And sometimes these can be uh, a little bit challenging to open up and get that test strip out. So usually what I do is I, I rip it open, I do a little shake like that and then the test strip will come out of there. Again, sometimes it can be a little challenging to get that out, especially if you don't have any fingernails. So I'll just rip the backside of it again. And you just wanna be careful not to rip the test strip. Now I've done uh, more than 60 of these. I've not ripped a test strip yet. So on that right side there, what you have here is the end that goes into the the glucose monitor. It's kind of like a little chip there. And then on this side, you got a little strip that is going to uh, check your blood. Now, you can't really see that, but it's just a little strip there that you're going to put a drop of blood on. Now, what's neat about these is that they are called uh, a vacuum strip. So it's going to just take that blood and then vacuum it into the reader machine, and then you're going to be good to go. So your reader machine, it does have a lot of stuff on it, um, a lot of information on it. Personally, I have not uh, had to worry about any of those things. All I do, all I did was set the time and the date, and then uh, all I do is stick the uh, test strip in. I don't worry about any of the other features that may be available on here. I wanna see my blood glucose, I wanna see my ketones, and then I wanna go to the app and I wanna check my GKI my glucose ketone index. So the way you're gonna do this is you're just gonna stick this in. And when you stick this in, it's going to read what type of a test strip it is. And you probably can't see that on there, but it does say GK or GLU. It does have a GLU right there. So it's reading it as a glucose monitor strip. And then we're gonna pull out our little pin pricker here. And we're gonna add one of the, the fine needles in here. Personally, I put it on a four just because I wanna make sure that I'm getting a good prick and I'm getting a good blood sample. You can change your dial right here on the top just like that, and it goes one to five. Now again, I put it on the four, because I've just put a fresh needle in, it's already loaded. If, uh, if you do need to reload, you're just gonna pull the back back until it clicks, and then you're gonna be ready to go. You do have a push button to eject the needle into your finger, and then you also do have a slider here to eject the entire needle out so that uh, you can dispose of it appropriately. So I'm just going to go on the tip of my finger here and I will say that I did just drink a little bit of bone broth and so that is going to trigger some insulin and it's also going to raise my blood sugar just a little bit. Now I am on a 15 hour fast right at 16 hours and uh, so drinking that bone broth is going to affect my reading here. Once you get that reading it's going to take five seconds, sometimes ten, 
And there you can see my reading is a 71. That is a super low blood sugar reading. It's the lowest I've ever had it. Typically, I'm right around 100. Now, my ketones uh, should be fair. Um, again, I've been on a, a good fast now, running right at about 16 hours. And so I'm just going to use that same blood there. And it beeps when it gets the reading. And then that's going to take about 10 seconds as well. Going to go through the same process. It's going to beep down. And then it's going to give us our ketone reading. And I got a 0.6 ketone reading, which is average for me. And so what I want to do next is I want to go to the app because I want to know what state of ketosis I am in. Okay, so I'm just going to swipe up. And on the top row here, you can see My Mojo Health. I'm going to click on that. And then, uh, so you can see yesterday, this was my reading. I had uh, 100 on my glucose and 0.5 on my ketones. And that just switched over. And uh, today is 227. So we're going to take a look here. You can see my glucose is recorded at 71. Ketones at a 0.6. And that puts me at a 6.5 um, GKI, which is some math that you can do to figure out what your GKI is. They give you all that information in your instruction manual. Uh, but a, a 6.5 is a really good low level of ketosis. Uh, so you got several different levels of ketosis. You got a low level, a moderate level, high level, and then a therapeutic level. And they go one to three, and then three to six, and then six to nine. Outside of nine, you're really not in ketosis. So being at a 6.5, I'm, I'm at a low level. If I wouldn't have had those, um, if I wouldn't have had the bone broth, there's a good chance that my ketone level would have been up. Uh, also, your ketones are going to change, your ketones and your glucose are going to change just on a, a regular basis, just like your blood pressure is going to change. Whether you stand up, sit down, exercise, walk, whatever it is, it's going to affect your ketones. So my suggestion for you is that you would uh, go ahead and check it at the same time every day. Do at least three days in a row. So you might check it first thing of the morning. Now, first thing of the morning, your body is waking up. And so you are going to be accelerated or high on your glucose in most cases. And so uh, you just want to take that into consideration, but that's going to be your fasted state. Next thing you want to try is maybe after a meal, two hours after a meal. Uh, you also might want to try, if you don't do your breakfast, uh, do it one hour after you wake up, two hours and three hours after you wake up, just to see how your body functions and how your body operates. Now, I've been up since about 6 a.m. It is currently 11 a.m., so I got five hours here, no food, except for that little bit of bone broth. And uh, you can see that my glucose was way down and my uh, ketones were moderate. Reason my ketones are moderate is because I'm probably burning ketones for fuel right now and they're not at the level that they could be. But I am in a low state of ketosis, which means I am burning fat for fuel and that's where I want to be. So if you're looking to monitor your glucose, you're looking to monitor your ketones, if you are on the keto diet, uh, then the... Uh, Keto Mojo is definitely the way to go. Highly recommended by the top professionals in the field. One thing I do want to show you is that you can scroll through here and you can see all of your previous recordings and where you have been on your glucose and on your ketones. And uh, that's going to give you a baseline. If you go to the Keto Mojo website, you can also see these recorded on an app on, the, uh, on, on your desktop, which is going to give you graphs. It's going to give you just your ketone reading, going to give you just your, your uh, glucose reading, or it's going to give you a graph of the GKI. So all of those things are needed and necessary to monitor your health so that you are being most efficient with your health and most efficient with burning, burning your fat for fuel. That is the Keto Mojo Monitor. It is one that I definitely recommend. If you'll notice, it does power off on its own, so you don't need to worry about that. It does come with batteries. You install them, and then you're going to be good to go. Now, you did see me pull that test strip out. There is an eject button right here so that you can just pop it out. You don't have to pull it out, but either way is fine. Uh, it's not going to damage your unit. Then you put everything back into its case. I like to just keep a few test strips right there in the case so that I don't have to go looking for them of the morning. And then... We're good to go. Now, don't forget, I'm not doing it right now, but don't forget to eject that, that uh, pinprick needle out of there so that nobody grabs hold of it and you cross-contaminate.